Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing, Terry? Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Oh, oh, I'm excited too. I'm doing wonderful. I've been wanting to interview you for some time now. I don't even know how we got connected through the social media world, you know, but <laughs> but we did. Yes. Uh, yes. And um, your story is amazing to me, not only your story, but what you do for a living. So please, um, Tell the audience um, uh, what you do and a little bit about yourself before we get started. Yeah, thank you so much, Terry. And I'm, I'm excited that we we got connected, however it ended up looking. And um, I'm just excited to be on the show today. So, you know, just a little bit about me. So my name is Paul Can, and I am a high performance and authentic leadership coach. So I work with corporate executives and corporate professionals that are burnt out. They are in the space of they're unfulfilled. They're just miserable where they're at. They're, they're making great money. They're great at what they do. But at the same time, there is a piece of their life that is missing. They're in the space of, of feeling like, is this all there is? And why do I just feel like I, I, I'm just not happy every single day? And we really work together to figure out what is their purpose? Who are they truly authentically? Because I think so often we can become one in terms of our identity with our work and, and our jobs. Mm. And who are we really without that? Who are we authentically? And ultimately, what is the work that truly lights us up and gets us jumping out of bed at the end of the, in the morning and you know, throughout the day? Is it really entrepreneurship? Is it really, you know, a different job? Or is it possibly reframing where you're at? So, um, you know, I, I'm really excited about that work, just because it's where not only where I came from, in terms of with my own story, being in corporate, coming from corporate myself, and having been in that space of, you know, climbing up the corporate ladder and just chasing the next goal and and it never end, end up, you know, kind of kind of coming to a place where you feel like you have arrived. It's this constantly moving target and, and being in the space of being burnt out all the time. And I just understand in terms of paying the deep prices, whether it's personally, whether it's in your relationships, whether it is um, even financially as well. Mm -hmm. And realizing that, you know what, at the end of the day, is this truly the life that I want to live? And am I really creating my best life and a life truly worth living. And so um, that's why I'm so passionate about the work I do. And um, I'm, I'm the host of the Yes I Can podcast as well, which is all about being fully unapologetically, authentically you. I'm a keynote speaker. Um, and yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I just love the work that I do just because I think we're at a time right now when so many people are in the space of questioning, is this truly who I am, like, who am I? And is this truly the work that I'm meant to do for the rest of my life? And if not, what does that look like? Wow. Your message uh, is so exciting and so, so important right now uh, for people. And I get excited. I'm lit up just listening to you because you just you exhume, you know, just enthusiasm. And so I know you, you, you're the only, you walk your talk because you are it right now. You're just <laughs> demonstrating that. And I, I think this is a message I, I like. I always have been uh, talking to my clients with about, and you know, you don't have to wait. There's not this place you have to get to. You can do it now. And, and for you to help people do that right now in their life, wherever they're at on the ladder in their corporate life, wherever they're at in their personal life. And that really um, a, a, a true a sense of being strong and courageous is really being authentic mm. and being real and you're true to who you are and living a passionate life. That's what we're meant to do. So, wow. Now you wonder why we connected. <laughs> it's I love, no your, I love your message. <laughs> no, no, I so love your message. And so let's, let's get on to um, with the, the Choose Courage movement. I've been interviewing people and asking them just a few questions to help our audience maybe look at their own life stories and see if maybe they have been courageous or maybe now they can put a word to it. And um, if not, maybe they can identify how they can be, can be more courageous into the future or maybe other people that they've seen that they've worked with or in their family or in their, their friends that have been courageous. And maybe that'll inspire them. So in a new moment in time right now, I'm going to ask you this question. Have you been courageous? Yeah, I feel like for most of my life, I have, I have had to step into courage and especially at the most life pivotal moments for me have mm. all been about courage. Um, 
part of my story is around how corporate, you know, just like being in corporate life, kind of like the climbing up the ladder and, and losing myself. But the bigger story beneath that is that 11 years ago, I came out as a transgender man. And that decision, you know, first of all, I came out and then I went right back into the closet because I was told by the people closest to me that no one would ever love someone like me. Ugh. And even coming to that decision took a lot of courage because my whole entire life, I mean, growing up, I didn't, I didn't even know what transgender was. I didn't know it was a thing. You know, we didn't really have the internet like we do now. <laughs> I, I mean, YouTube came out when I was 18 years old. So I didn't know what it was. I just knew there was gay and there was straight and you choose one or the other. And I think just growing up in an immigrant family in a Catholic household, it just wasn't really an option. And yes. I had felt so inauthentic, inauthentic for so much of my life, but I just didn't quite know what was inauthentic about it. Right. I just knew that it felt like I was in like wearing a Halloween costume every single day. And it finally got to a point when, um, you know, I started dating my, my first girlfriend. I, I mean, I was dating for the first time and the label lesbian just didn't fit with me. There's nothing wrong with it. It just, it just didn't fit. Mm -hmm. And when I finally discovered on YouTube, these guys talking about their journey as a transgender man, this light bulb, I'm like, this makes so much sense. This is who I am. Wow. And yet from there, it was this, now what? And mm -hmm. the journey, and as I did more research and talked to more people that had been in the same space, everybody around me, all the narratives around me were, you're going to have to lose everybody in your life. You're going to lose all your friends. You're going to lose your family. You are going, your, your family's not doctor. And I even want to go to see you and, and you're going to, you know, be in this space of possibly being poverty and things are going to be a struggle. And I'm like, wow, like, is this really the price I got to pay in order to be me? Like in order yeah. to just be authentically me and be free. Yes. And at that moment, I really had to choose. And it was a really big struggle because I could possibly lose everything in my life. I could possibly be kicked out of my house. I could possibly, you know, I was going to university at the time. I mean, clearly wouldn't be able to afford tuition if that was the case. And so, you know, what do I choose in this moment? And in that moment, I chose to be free. I chose the courage to step into being me because if I wasn't being me, that didn't feel like a life worth living. And wow. so after I stepped into that, I went right back into the closet like I shared because I had lived up until that point where I was treated differently all the time. I was treated differently from when I was a very young age. I was bullied throughout my time in school. I was even suicidal in middle school. And I just didn't see that life was worth living because I mean, at the, I just couldn't find my own worthiness. And it got to that point where I wanted so badly just to be normal, to fit in, to be accepted, that once I transitioned, it was almost this like light at the end of the tunnel. It's like, once I become Paul, I can finally live this life where I won't be looked at differently or treated differently ah, by everybody else. That makes sense. But yet yeah. what I didn't realize was that I had so much shame around who I was. And I was so ashamed of myself that I couldn't even say the word transgender for 10 years. Oh. I couldn't even, it couldn't even come out of my mouth. And even when I met my wife and she, she loved me and accepted me for everything I was in the back of my mind, I'm like, this is way too good to be true. She's going to wake up one day and realize this is not what she signed up for and she's going to leave me. And so I was constantly in the space of being fearful of losing the things I had and living in fear about who would find out and when, and if that happened, I'd be rejected and ostracized. And so I kept myself in this invisible prison uh, for, for over 10 years. And it finally got to a point where, you know, I was, I was just constantly self-sabotaging myself because I, I just told myself things can't get too good in my life mm -hmm. or else they're going to be taken away from me. So I might mm -hmm. as well just sabotage my life once it gets to a certain point. Yes, so I that don't makes have sense. to get disappointed. Yes. Easily yeah. done. Yes. And so I got to a point where my marriage was falling apart, where I had no joy in my life. Like I was moving up the corporate ladder. I was, I was moving up in my career. I was making the money. I was living in a penthouse. And at the same time, I, I was going on vacation and finding myself just, I had no joy. I was just mechanically living every single day. And the things that I had been holding so hard to, like, like holding so, like gripping onto, like my marriage was falling apart because I was keeping my wife in this invisible prison with me. And so wow. it got to a point Amazing. where yeah. my wife basically said, hey, like I either have to leave or I feel like I'm going to die here. 
And so I realized something drastically had to change in my life or else I was going to lose everyone and everything in my life. And so yeah. that's when I finally went into do the inner work and, and went into a transformational leadership program. And it transformed my life to see, first of all, all the walls I had had put up in my life that had stopped me from receiving love and, and I'd stopped loving myself and I couldn't love anyone in return. And I was for the very first time, I accepted myself and I allow yeah. myself this permission to be authentically me and to be free for the first time. Wow. And, so, and how long ago was this, Paul? This was about a year and a half ago. So it wasn't that long <sighs> ago. Wow. And even yeah. when I came out and I started uh, in terms of not even coming out, but like accepting myself, then there was this question of now what? And mm -hmm. I started telling the people around me and everyone in my family knew at that point, like the people that were my friends knew and I was loved and accepted. And I really could have stayed in that bubble. But at the same time, after I came out uh, in terms of to myself, I feel like, mm -hmm. and, and really accepted myself, now it was, well, how do I show up in the world? And mm -hmm. I just, I could either choose this path of just continuing to stay safe where I was. But yet there was something that was just, would it, it wouldn't go away. It kept nudging me. And, and I was building up my coaching business at that time. And just, there was something that was just not, you know, it wasn't clicking and everything just felt hard. And I'm like, what, what is this right now? Like, why mm -hmm. do I feel this like unrest? Mm -hmm. And it was because I realized at the very core of it was that I'm a, my, my purpose is to really be a stand for authenticity. And I can't do that without being fully authentic myself to the world. Yeah, yes. So I knew that I had to come out. I knew it. And I dreaded it. I was mortified. I was terrified. I was so scared of losing everything. And I just moved to the U S I couldn't even leave the country if I wanted, cause I was applying for my green card. And there were so many things where I'm like, well, if people don't accept me, I feel I'm going to be trapped. And I was so scared of going back to this place of being ostracized and having mm -hmm. nowhere to go. Yes. And it finally got to a place where like it, 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 this feeling wouldn't go away. And I just felt this constant unrest. And I'm like, I have to come out. Like I, I get to, and I'm like, you have terrified. no choice, almost like no choice. Like I, yeah, this, yeah. this is it, right? Yeah. This it's is like, it's it. not going to go away yeah. unless I, I, unless I finally face it. And I, yeah. and so I just trust in that moment. And I'm like, you know what, if I'm meant to go down this path, I get to trust that I am safe, that I am provided for and that the, the path will show up for me. Like that, I, like, like, that God is going to support me and that he's going to pave the way for me. If he wants me to go down this path, because I really personally do not want to, <laughs> Right. but if you right. want this, <laughs> then show me the way. And so it took all my courage to a uh, uh, July of last year, July 21st to write this public post, sharing my story for the first time on all of my <sighs> social media platforms. And when I pressed post, I just cried my eyes out for like oh, half an oh, hour because I bet you did. I bet you did. There was, yeah, this like immense just weight that I didn't even realize I've been carrying around yeah. on my shoulders for 30 years of my life. This weight of not being free to be yes. me. Yes. And the moment I did that, it was like, Phew. and so that took all the courage <laughs> I had and really is what led us to this path to, you know, us connecting today and me doing the work that I do today um, because of these moments of courage. Yes, you went, I'm, I'm really feel full of emotion right now, um, of joy, pride, um, um, uh, every emotion possible for what you've gone through. And that is a demonstration of the, the ultimate courage because really being honest with the world and risking losing everything you love or care for, to me, is one of the most brave things you could ever do in your life, but you chose you, you chose Thank to you. be yourself and you are a gift. And if you didn't choose that, you would not be able to show up fully to share your gifts mm -hmm. like you are right now. So this is a huge message. And it sounds like for how many years, many years. Yeah, it was, it was 11 years in the making to really get to the point of finally being free. And it was I mean, my whole life, my entire life of, of just trying to be someone that I wasn't trying to appease others, being scared of not being accepted this whole journey to finally get to this place where I gave myself this gift mm -hmm. to be you free. Did. You and did. You did. I realized that this freedom didn't lie outside of me. It was really within me. 
Yes. Yes. And I'm sure as you went through all of this, you weren't saying I'm courageous, right? Which no. you have been your, <laughs> <laughs> which you've been yeah. your entire life. You have been courageous because you didn't give up first of all. Mm. And you kept trying to find the right answer for yourself. Mm. And you push past tremendous fear your whole life mm -hmm. and bullying. And I mean, I mean, how many things have you pushed in doubt? Mm -hmm. And so if you were to talk to this, the audience about how you would describe courage now looking back and how other people can find that in their own life, what would you tell them? Yeah, I, I think courage is, is not, we talk about being fearless a lot. You hear this like being fearless. Mm -hmm. Courage isn't about being fearless. Courage is about feeling the fear and doing it anyways, like going through it, going through it instead of around it. A lot of times we yes. try to be, I know, I know for myself, like I would try to go around it. I'm choosing the comfortable path just because it's easier. I mean, it's not going to cause all these ruffles. And, and I honestly could have lived a life where I could have either stayed in corporate. I could have you know, the people around me in my life all knew they loved me and accepted me. I really didn't have to go down this path. I really didn't have to. And at the same time, this is, I think there, we come across these moments in our lives where we know that on the other side seems terrifying because there is this huge unknown. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we know that if we stay where we are and we're safe, that mm -hmm. we will never be fully living our best lives, like really going full out in a way where at the very end of our lives, there's no regrets, or we feel like in every moment, we're truly living our lives and as a, this adventure versus as this, um, I would say, you know, almost fan on the sideline, like watching life happen in front of us and just very robotically living. And so yes. it is these moments when they are scary. And honestly, for me, it's still scary. Every time that I share my story, there still is this mm. hesitation. And as I continue to move forward in this journey, the stakes and the people that I'm in front of, it goes up every single time. Mm -hmm. It goes from people that I know are going to be accepting of me to people that are not to people that there's this very real chance that they are going to completely not be accepting and they are going to be against everything that I am. Mm -hmm. And it takes this courage, like the, the courage isn't this one time and then it's it. It's this yes. building up of a muscle mm -hmm. and choosing to continue to live um, uh, fully courageous. It's, it's choice. It really is a choice. And mm -hmm. um, it's about not shrinking into our smallness and being held back by the things that could happen or possibly could happen or you know letting the opinions of others or the the limitations stop us but mm -hmm. it really is at the end of the day seeing the possibility that's on the other side and constantly standing in it and choosing it and also trusting that if this is something that is calling you deeply in your heart that you get to go do or move towards it's really letting go of the control to need to have it or know it like know all of it or have it all together. And it's trusting that you're taking care of. It's trusting that if you're meant to be on this path, that there will always be a way and you'll be taken care of. And that has been the, the theme for this entire journey for me, because there's yes, no yeah. way that I could have created this on my own. And every step of the way, I just told myself, you know what, God, if you want me to go down this path, then I trust that you will be providing for me everything that I need to go down this path because I certainly cannot do it alone. Yeah. And I certainly don't want to do this because yeah. this is very uncomfortable and I'd rather stay here. But if you're, you're calling me to go there and if that's truly where my purpose lies, then I'm choosing to trust and surrender to this like bigger divine blueprint that I have no clue what it looks like. And every single time I've done that, it has worked out. And so- <sighs> my invitation for you is to really lean into if there is something that, and I truly feel like each of us have this intuition and this, this calling in our heart where we will just know, we just pretend to ignore it, but we know, <laughs> we know, we know what, yeah, yes. where we're, what, where we're being called to go. Yes. And I invite you to lean into that. And even in the fear to go through it, because the only way is through, through. there is no way around it. 
Paul, you, you are saying everything that I believe in and everything that I've studied around all of the fear and, the, and courage and all of that. And, and it's really choosing, making a choice to, to face everything. And on the other side of fear is am amazing freedom, amazing gifts. Uh, the unknown is our friend. And really there's a statistic out there that 98% of what we fear never happens mm. yet. It can be um, paralyzing and, you know, but if you don't go through it, um, it'll stay with you. It'll, mm. it'll control you. And, and again, and, and then letting go and trusting something bigger than ourselves. I'm so in agreement with that, whatever that is, right. That, mm -hmm. that there's a universe, there's, there's God, there's whatever it is you, you um, trust in, let go and know that you will be provided and that your highest good and, and stepping into your highest good in life is really a gift to yourself and to others. And, you know, I did this um, when I did my TED talk, I shared stories that I hid my entire life that I was always ashamed of. And for the first time during my TED talk, because I made the transition into seeing my shameful stories now as courageous stories, I shared everything for the first time. It was the most freeing experience of my entire life. So similar to yours, I've never looked back. And it's mm -hmm. like to be seen for, for everything of who you really are, whether people get it or they don't understand, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you were being yourself and you're being authentic and you're telling the truth. And mm -hmm. your story, I, I know your story is going to inspire so many people. And um, how can they get a hold of you? Thank you for being courageous and authentic. And, and I, I feel honored to be able to speak with you and share your story. So how can people get a hold of you? Yeah. So thank you, first of all, for, um, for the opportunity to have this conversation with you and to really share this message with your audience. It's just, I'm, I'm very honored. So thank you, first of all, for, for having me. I, I truly appreciate it. Uh, for those of you that want to get a hold of me, um, you can find me at my website, uh, www.yesican.com. Um, you can also find me on my podcast, which is also called Yes I Can. Um, K A N. You can find it on all the different um, outlets where there's podcasts. So from Spotify, iTunes, um, all all the all the good stuff. Um, and as well, I mean, feel free to um, reach out as well. I believe Terry has a link to it. Um, I. If you're in this place where you have been stuck, where you've been feeling really burnt out, where you've been feeling like you are wanting a change in your life where you really feel like, is this truly it? And you're awake at 3 a.m. just wondering, wow, like, is this all they're gonna, is it gonna be to my life? And, and what is the impact that I'm making? And like, I'm, I'm not happy where I am. I love to jump on a call with you. You know, I have a, 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 a free um, call that I love to offer you, which is the pathway to fulfillment, where we're really going to get to the core of what really is your vision and what is this pathway that gets to look like. We're going to create that together for you to create the life worth living, the life of your dreams that you've always wanted without sacrificing the things that are most important to you. So. Um, uh, I think Terry's going to have that uh, link, but love to okay. connect with you. Okay, we will definitely make sure that everyone has that, and everybody reach out to Paul because I know if you're if you're just on that edge and know that you need to push past your fear and and really live a, a life of your dreams or the life that you're meant to live and an authentic life, Paul is your person right now. Reach out to him. So um, it, there's there's no time like the present. So thank you so much, mm -hmm. and um, I look forward to talking to you again. And have a wonderful day, Paul. You too. Thank okay. you so much, Terry. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you.